real mecca of boxing is not in Vegas. The rings that have consistently produced some of the world's greatest boxers aren't in the West. They're here, in a tiny village on the coast of Ghana. Fighting is a universal language. Some people just speak it better than others. In the neighborhood of Bukom, they're fluent. We're in the Gold Coast of Africa, Ghana. We are in the capital city, Accra. This neighborhood is Bukom. The size of about three football fields and of 20,000 people. But for some reason, it has turned out countless world champion boxers. There must be something in the water in Bukom. It's hard to comprehend how so many world champions could have come from this one tiny village. We're talking about guys like Joshua Clotty, Alfred Cody, the professor, Azuma Nelson, arguably the greatest African boxer of all time, and DK Poison, Bukom's first ever world title holder. Would you like to make a prediction? Oh, well, I'm going to win at all costs. DK Poison became the first Ghanaian boxer to win a world title in 1975. And doing so, galvanized an entire country of embattled people around a love for boxing and a hope that even their lives could change. He got his start in these dusty courtyards. This is the place. This is the place? Yes, 40 years ago, 74, eh? 40 years ago? 40 years ago. Come, come, get a, come here, you see Africa ring? This is an African ring? You fall ring. down, you break your neck, you know? It will toughen your, this thing, your morale. Yeah, uh. so if you get knocked out then you here, see, uh -huh. you get knocked out twice. Then, then make sure you don't get knocked out. DK might be Ghana's first world title holder, but organized fighting has been around here forever. Long before boxing was made into a professional sport, and long before the British settled this part of the coast, the Ga people had Asafo Atuele, the tradition of group fighting. By the 1920s, Asafo Atuele became a ritual of the past, when Edmund Bannerman, a British-educated member of the Ga tribe, returned to the Gold Coast from overseas and brought with him the rules and institution of formalized boxing. To date, Bukom has had a world champion in every decade since the 1970s. But with no new champion yet to emerge in the current decade, the large crop of talented boxers in Bukom continue a fight that's been with them long before they were born. Joshua Clotty is Bukom's most recent world champ, winning his IBF welterweight title in 2008. Clotty's widely considered a hero in Ghana, and he's got vivid memories of learning to fight in Bukom. If you see my hair, you can see that I have some problems here. Mm. Because I used to wear a very small size of shoe. Even if it's hurting, you have to manage it because there is no help from nowhere. Even if you go to most of the gyms, there is no much good punching bag, no good facilities, no speedball, no nothing. It's terrible. But you know one thing for sure, where you belong from Bukum, it's always about fighting. No one is scared. We don't scare nothing because at the end of the day, we know that it's all about fighting, not about hardship throughout our life. So we'll die. Like this boxing game, if you scare, you already lose. If you don't scare, it makes you more harder, it makes you win. The neighborhood is full of ruddy boxing gyms, if you could even call them that. But what you'll see a lot of here, apart from busted punching bags, are kids. In Bukom, your training to become the world champ starts young. This is Theo and Prince. They're 14 and 12 years old and they spend just about every free minute they have here training. 
preparing for the day when they'll have a shot to make it out of the gym and into the ring. Every day, when I go to the ring, I don't fear anybody. I don't fear punch. If you try, I'll just dodge and give you. When we got here, they looked like kids. And then they put on their wraps and their gloves. And they look like little men. Hey, hey, hey. Their intense dedication to training has set Theo and Prince on a path. Even at this age, they've got their eyes on the future. Growing up in Bukom, you kind of have to. What kind of challenges do you have as a father to support them in their training so that they can take it to the next level? Support time. Theo and Prince's father is Felix Amarke. And like most men in Bukom, Felix is a fisherman. For the Ga people, fishing is a way of life. Outside of boxing, it's the life and the only economy here. So growing up, a job in the Jamestown Fish Harbor is to be expected. And the young men here know that their future holds two options. They can either fish or fight. It is Saturday night in Bukom. We watch them set up this ring in the middle of an intersection where cars usually drive. There's essentially a scout who scouts young talent. Kids sign up and they let them have at it. Oh! <laughs> These kids are wailing on each other. The long held tradition of Saturday night street fights in Bukom gives Theo and Prince an early taste of competition chance to show their stuff. Watching the way this kid counter punches and all the footwork we saw him in training, like, to see him applying that in the ring at 12 years old, but like he looks like a young adult with a game plan. In fairness, I'm a man I'm no bossing. In case Kaji, I'm in school, I'm a cashier. I can't even get a boss in your way. I need no profit. I get out of the mood. Mood. What's it? I'm buying a new one. I'm going to get one. Okay, I'm buying a car from the pony. I'm ready to buy a car. I'm going 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 to buy a car. We're here just after sunrise on a Sunday in Bukom, and the entire community is coming in in droves from all over Bukom for morning fitness on the beach. Look, this is what they do. You just see groups that are jogging from different areas of the neighborhood, running, 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 chanting, and then they show up, and this is morning calisthenics in Bukong. If you thought that these people were just naturally fit or that it was just the boxers, no, this is a way of life. Hey, hey, hey. Go. This is the gym. find a movie theater in Bukong. 
The posters that cover the walls here all show one thing. In this neighborhood, fighting is the ultimate entertainment. And the people's obsession with it is powerful enough to turn even a criminal into a celebrity. So I mean, can't do like, baby, I'm free before. I'm saying I'm about boxing in Mundia. I grew a genuine interest as I said, I'm a media man because you're not a new one who's a win. What we must say, they're meeting me. I need to meet me. We're champion already. Hey, 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 because Obo me di Obu ko, Obi anim di ayimam le tego me ti mi aye, Obi anim di ame ye, and Obi anim baby ame free before ne, mamba boxing because, sir me can't show up before na me ye crown for, na me ye a lot of normal like me ye normal be free, ha uni pa uni me over time. I mean, I'm going to be better now. I'm going to be able to see me as a man for me. I'm going to be able to see me as a man for me. I'm going to be able to see me as a flower. I'm going to be able to see me as a man for me. I'm going to be able to see me as a man for me. I'm going to be able to see me as a man for me. I'm going to be able to see me as a man for me. I'm going to be able to see me as a man for me. I'm going to be able to see me as a man for me. I'm going to be able to see me as a man for me. I'm going to be able to see me as a man for me. Game Boy's reputation in Bukom is bigger than ever, but today he's known for something else, an eccentric boxing style that's earned him a shot at an IBF title bout. Africa, when we want to talk about boxing, the home of boxing in Africa is Ghana. And now, the new champion that we are awaiting is that Emmanuel, the Game Boy, Tago. Can you go to anyone who knows you or can only tell my feet? Now, what's now? The media says, it's a stadium from a funnel, it's in from a funnel, or the other one may find. Now, Drew. What can you back and feel? Can you not make a chap game when you tell me a cap? It is fight night Friday in Ghana. We're at a cross sports stadium. We want to watch some boxing. This is a procession. Look at that. Mayweather walks out with Justin Bieber. This dude gets carried out like a king. And everybody's been told to get ready to rumble here in Accra, but it's a WBA international. Title bout uh, between Emmanuel Tego and Jobert Reyes. Some antics coming from Emmanuel Tego, typical of him. Oh, oh, oh! Emmanuel Tego is a dangerous inside fighter. A good right coming from Emmanuel Tego. That point, what? Yeah. Big right hand point. You can see he can handle his stand and keep his foot in.
if you are an African and you are fighting in everywhere in the world, it's always going to be tough for you. You know, nothing is going on here. No sponsorship. Pay a guy $1,000, even less. $500, even less. Then he's getting the same cuts, the same swelling, the same pains. That same punch and cut for $500 mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. that simple economics. Somebody's making $200 uh, million. Even with a history of fighting at their backs, even in a place where the culture of fitness and the weak economy breeds natural boxers, the up-and-comers in Bukom know that real success can only be earned outside their borders. To get there, you have to be ready to take the damage. Tough area. Adults don't come and break up the fights from, nah. from the kids. Nah. Even if you don't know how to throw a punch, mentally it makes you stronger. Because as long as you get beaten for many people, you're not scared of punching, you're not scared of getting hit. Right. That said, it must be strange sometimes when you come home and you see this everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's been years since Ghana last had a boxer who brought home a world title, but Richard Comey might be their next best shot. With only six years of fighting experience under his belt, Comey has exploded onto the scene, earning a record of 21-0, with 19 of those wins coming from Naka. He's quickly become Ghana's number one ranked fighter and currently ranked seventh in the IBF World Rankings. When some people make it to the top, they, they, they suddenly forget about where they come from. But, you know, here's the case whereby I never forget about them. I'm always with them. You know, I also love to put a smile on their face because I know the passion they are when I'm fighting. So they want to see you do yeah, something. Gives you power. That's right. Success has provided Comey the opportunity to train in world-class facilities in London. But before every big fight, he chooses to train here in the Bronx Boxing Gym of Bukong, home base for Comey's trainer and local legend, Carl Loco. Wherever you go in the world, you see Ghanaians talking about boxing. They are proud because they have people who have made it for them to be proud of. When another champion has left and another one is coming, still have to take a time. If you rush in, you will fade out very fast and very sharp. What puts Richard Comey a cut above the rest of the young boxers in Bukong is his upcoming fight in Las Vegas. It's an IBF title bout and an internationally televised fight on boxing's world stage. A win could catapult him into contention for a world title shot. A loss could leave him just another boxer with a missed opportunity. I always look at the guys. I feel so pain for them because I've been through a lot with this my career. But when you make it, you can take care of family. You can feed people. At least, you're not going to feel no pain. What does it mean to your family for you to go to Vegas and get this shot? Man, massive. It means great, you know? My mom is going to be proud. My dad is going to be proud. And I just want to win this title for them. Ladies and gentlemen, from the D Las Vegas, this is our main event of the evening. Coming to Las Vegas, man, I feel excited and honored to be here because I know a lot of boxers back home in Ghana and they've never had the chance to fight here. And here I am. It is scheduled for 10 rounds in the lightweight division and it will be for the vacant IBF Intercontinental Championship. For Richard, I mean, to be in Las Vegas, to get a chance in US and the first fight is in Las Vegas, I mean, it's, it's a chance you have to grab it with both hands. Some of the English press was really singing his praises. They said, the best Ghana to come along in decades, and that indeed is high praise. This is the place I've been imagining, like I've been thinking and I've been, you know, praying for one day, and it has come so soon. So I was like, whoa, finally, I've stepped in the land of opportunities. Gentlemen, let's do this. Look, both men are, are skilled fighters 
know they are a couple of fights away from potentially uh, getting into world title contention. And for the first time, some real action and a good right hand from Kobe. If there's been any damage in this fight, it's been caused by Mama John. Final 10 seconds of this round. And a great shot by Mama John. That hurt Kobe. Best punch of the fight from either man. An emphatic sixth round for Mamajanov. There's a great shot from Mamajanov, and Kobe's showing a pretty good beard. And again, Mamajanov right on top of Kobe, who has his back to the ropes right above us. Double left hand, and they're going to say that that is not a knockout. It was a push as much as it was a punch, but there was a punch there. That's the beauty of this sport. One punch can change everything. Komei's only one punch away from turning this fight back around. Now it's Komei on top, and down goes Mama John. Komei all of a sudden seems filled with confidence, as he should. As fights go on, he's not just a knockout puncher, he's got stamina, he's just as good at the end of fights as he is in the beginning. This midway through the round, a body shot for Komei. Mamajan off in retreat, Kobe misses two shots. Up against the ropes, takes him by the hand. Combination from Kobe. Robert Ford looking in very closely. Kobe just peppering Mamajan off, who has no answer right now. Right hand again, and that's it! Kobe wins it! Wow! His win in Vegas was the most important of Komi's career, cementing him as Ghana's best young fighter. But the next morning, after finally arriving in the land of opportunities, Richard Comey boarded the earliest flight he could get out of Vegas and flew back to Ghana. Richard Comey's plane ticket might just symbolize how an African neighborhood so small it could fit inside Madison Square Garden is such a player in the world of boxing how the town of Bukom is single-handedly responsible for the birth of more champions per capita than any one place in the world. Because for the fighters here, like Richard Comey, boxing's never been their way out of the neighborhood. It's been their way in. Maybe Josh Clotty said it best. Guys here get paid just a few bucks to fight, yet they take the same damage, the same cuts and bruises as the guy getting paid millions to do it somewhere else. But in Bukom, it's what they do.